big news. Johnny Cash and Waylon Jennings returned to the stage. It was Johnny's first appearance since his diagnosis of Parkinson's disease last fall. And the first time Waylon has appeared in public since rumors surfaced concerning his health. Well, it happened at a concert called Witness History, and it was part of Chet Atkins' Musician Days. The concert showcased some of the top instrumentalists as well as Marty Stewart and Travis Tritt's tribute to the founding members of the outlaw movement. Gail Grasso has more on the Night of Legends. One day on the radio, I heard this thing come on the radio go. Marty Stewart honored two of the legends who helped shake Music City. Well, I don't think I ain't done it this way. And if you were a painter, it's like having Michelangelo or Picasso around. And to overlook them and to, you know, f kind of forget about them, we're real wrong if we do that. And it's really nice to see that happen. My brother Travis Tritt. Where I've had an opportunity to perform on stage both with John and with and Waylon both. And, uh, you know, performing with them is one thing. I mean, that's, that's scary enough. But getting up there and performing in front of them doing their songs, that's a, that's a pretty heavy thing. I, I'm glad I was able to get through it. I walk I was standing right up there one time when the uh, first time I ever saw Johnny Cash sing this song. I almost fell out of the balcony. Well, I woke up Sunday morning. No way to hold my head. It didn't hurt. My favorite moment is I saw Cash standing up there, you know, twitching, and while Chris was singing Sunday morning coming down, I went over to him. He said, you know, I was thinking about stepping out there on that stage and singing with him, and I said, go do it, go do it. I shoved him out there, and he went out there. And that was the first time he'd been on stage since October. Sunday morning sidewalk. I'm wishing, Lord, that I was gone. It was a wonderful moment to see Chris. It nailed Chris in the heart. I think it nailed everybody in the heart. But it got me because it was great to see the man in black back. We salute him for always standing up for musical integrity. And we loved it when he gave country radio the finger. <laughs> Johnny came back on stage to accept a Chetty Award. It recognizes a lifetime of musical achievement that's had international impact. He spoke up for the first time on stage about his battle with pneumonia last year. You know, when uh, so many of them down at the hospital were giving up on me back in October, there was a, a prayer line that went out on the internet all over the world, and there were groups that were forming prayer groups. There, there were group, people that were forming prayer groups, and uh, not only just in churches, but in homes. And, uh, you know, it all lit up all over the world. They, they prayed all night long. The prayers went on with these people in these groups and at, these, at, their, at their websites. And uh, next morning, the doctor had told me later that uh, she, had, you know, hadn't given up on me, but had turned it over to God that there was no way that modern medicine could uh, bring me out of it and uh, but it happened about eight o'clock in the morning I set up and of course the first thing I asked for was a cup of coffee <laughs> and, uh, been a slow climb since then but it's been a beautiful climb and I've learned who loves me and a little bit about who don't but they will then Waylon Jennings who has been struggling with the effects of diabetes walked out to take his chetty I knew if I carried that around long enough, they'd give me something out of sympathy. You'd be surprised how much sympathy you get and how it works in some areas. I've been well for about two months. But Waylon was serious about his appreciation for his former boss, Chet Atkins. Chet signed me before he ever saw me. He didn't know I was cute. The great thing about him, he never even realized himself, you know. He thought, well, when he quit producing so much, he thought he didn't have anything to offer. The thing he had to offer was just being there. And he's a wonderful man, and I will treasure this all of my life. Thank you. Finally, Mr. Guitar made an appearance with his friend, Mark Knopfler, for the encore performance of the evening. I thank you for the special thrill. Keep me going on until the next time I... So we begin today with the latest on the man in black.
Well, his fans were stunned this week when Johnny Cash revealed that he's been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Despite an active concert and book touring schedule, the country legend has had to cancel all appearances. Stormy Warren has the story. Johnny Cash always knew he had a large fan base, and over the past few days, the well wishes to his website have proven it. Johnny was in the middle of promoting his new autobiography when the disease forced him to cancel the tour. Thank you. Hey, you, honey. But before revealing his diagnosis, Johnny received a hero's welcome at a Nashville book signing. It was there that the man in black shared what piqued his interest in music. You know, I listened to the country records when I was a boy on the radio. We didn't have any musical instruments, couldn't afford them, but I listened to the radio and heard all the songs and I had a really high aptitude for remembering words and I still sing a lot of those songs every day that uh, I learned when I was a boy. I hear the train a coming, it's rolling around the bend, and I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when, I'm stuck in Folsom prison, and time keeps dragging on. You won't find many who will argue that Johnny captures the soul of the downtrodden. And that may be because his personal stories are just as true to life. They're also found on the pages of Cash, the autobiography. You know, it was really difficult to get started. To go into my past and all the hard times, the drugs, uh, the whole thing, you know. It was really in the death of my brother, which I wrote, wrote quite extensively in this book. Once I got into it, though, I started enjoying it, telling stories about my life, you know, and realizing finally that a lot of people hadn't heard these stories. Many of Cash's stories include his friends, and a few of them showed up for support. I'm pretty sure he told a lot about me that I forgot to put in my book. <laughs> I've read most of John's books and reviewed a couple of them, and he's a good writer, good storyteller, and I'm looking forward to reading it. Johnny Cash has a great turnout here tonight, man. He's packed the place, and uh, it's great to be out here and uh, support Johnny in June, and uh, um, it's just an honor to be out here. Johnny wrote about a few honors of his own in the book, as well as the story of his triumphant survival in the music business. He's been embraced by a variety of audiences through the years, even without the support of country radio. Oh, that's all right. They don't want to hear my music. It ought not to be played. <laughs> I've had the, the last two albums, though, have been very good for me. I've reached a bunch of new people that some of them, I hope, appreciates it. And it's, uh, it's fun all over again. It's like 1955 performing for them, you know, when those young people are in the audience. I'm having a ball with it. It's that positive attitude that may help Johnny return to work. He says he refuses to let Parkinson stop him, and with medication, he hopes his condition will stabilize. Now, if you would like to send Johnny an email note, the address is johnnycash.com less than a month and it's reportedly left him partially paralyzed on his left side. Carl had just been released from a Tennessee hospital the day before the stroke after being treated for a reaction he had to iron medication. The guitar whiz is probably best known for writing the hit Blue Suede Shoes. Well, the news is better for Carl's friend Johnny Cash. The former highwayman had been seriously ill in a Nashville hospital for about a month before heading home a couple of weeks ago. Well, earlier this week, Johnny's sister Joanne told us her brother is well on the road to recovery. Johnny is doing much better. I talked with him yesterday and he said slowly but surely he is coming back. His strength is coming back. He was uh, a very sick man for quite a long time there in the hospital and we're so thankful for everybody's prayers. Thank you very much for praying for him and continue to do so. Johnny had been keeping a busy schedule promoting his new book until he was diagnosed with Shy Drager syndrome. While he was being treated in the hospital, the man in black fell ill with double pneumonia. Well, he's out of the hospital and regaining his strength, thanks in part to an outpouring of love and support from his fans. Just an overwhelming, overwhelming response. And th those letters are still coming in in the cards. And, and again, we thank everybody for being so concerned and so loving. And most of all, for your prayers. Well, Johnny will continue to rest over the Christmas and New Year holidays with his wife, June, at their home in Jamaica. Robert Duvall is one of American the most familiar faces. He has starred in some of Hollywood's biggest films and even won an Academy Award for his role as a country singer in Tender Mercies. His latest offering is called The Apostle. We're going to have a Holy Ghost explosion. We got the keys to the kingdom. Somebody give me an amen. Duvall 
plays a Southern Pentecostal preacher. Farrah Fawcett is cast as his wife in the film, and their domestic troubles cause him to flee in search of a new life. Well, I'm the apostle EF. Believe it or not, the Lord sent me to have fellowship with you. You say God led you to me, and not to anybody else. Yes, sir, I do believe that. Yes, sir. For the movie soundtrack, Duvall turned to Nashville. He enlisted the help of both country and gospel singers like Emmy Lou Harris, Vince Gill, and Stephen Curtis Chapman for the music. Once people saw the movie, they seemed to react to it positively, and we, it, this is such a pool of talent down here. It's wonderful that, and you know, it's just that the people have stepped up to be in the album. It's great, and it's wonderful. It should be a very exciting album. I love to tell the story of unseen things above. Duval teams with Emmy Lou Harris for a duet. This traditional gospel song was new to Emmy Lou. You gotta understand that I come from the Episcopal Church and we don't have any real good hymns. We sang it live together, which was the only way to do a song like this, and did it with all acoustic instruments. So I think we pretty much nailed it. I had bumped into Emmy Lou a few years ago in Salt Lake and I jumped up on the stage, we sang a song together. So I know her a little bit and uh, so it, we have a kind of a rapport and she I felt safe with her. I love to tell the story because I know true. I'm a huge fan of his. I mean, I've probably seen everything he's ever done. And, of course, uh, Tender Mercies was wonderful, but I, think he, I don't think he's ever made a bad movie. Vince Gill added some mandolin to the song and gave thumbs up to the vocal performance. Emmy can make uh, anybody sound great, but uh, he really does have a really pleasing, believable, sweet voice. It's neat. gospel music. Well, the Apostle should be showing with cameos from June Carter Cash and Billy Joe Shaver at your local theater in January. As far as the soundtrack, look for it in stores February 13th.